In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this powerful promotional tool to your advantage. Yes, it is a bookmark. It's blank on the back, it's colorful and bold on the front, has my name and the book's title on, uh, on it, and they can be mass produced by the thousands. They are in fact very cheap. These come in, uh, came in a block, or blocks, uh, and I bought a whole case of them at, when I first published my, uh, my second novel. My second novel is, of course, called Bones Burnt Black. This is the design, the art style here, is based on the first, uh, first book cover. I brought that book out in 2004, and it was published in uh, physical book form, that is, uh, made of atoms rather than electrons. There are many ways you can use a bookmark to your advantage for book promotion. You can give them away for free, uh, and you can uh, incorporate them into signage. Um, for example, this is a sign item I made by taping uh, at these points uh, three bookmarks together. Uh, so they form a triangular, triangular shape. Um, to make them more stable, I taped uh, pennies on the inside of each of the three walls and to give it more structural strength I, I taped a, uh, um, a cylinder of uh, a hollow cylinder of paper inside it. I made about uh, I think about eight or ten of these took them to a science fiction convention I was going to and put them out on the tables at various locations throughout the con. Not so much the table where I was speaking from on panels exactly um, but other tables, I put two at least, I remember at least two, in the con suite, and I put um, some of them on various coffee tables in the hallways around the con, um, and uh, it made a very nice effect, and people left them there, they didn't move them, uh, and so they remained uh, making an impression on people uh, all through the con. Also, you'll notice that uh, in a number of the photos I've shown you already, and as well as some that I will show you yet to be, yet to, yet to show you, um, I also wear, uh, I wear a bookmark as a badge, because I taped onto the top of it, I don't know if you can see this, uh, a clip, so that I could tape it onto the collar of my shirt, which you're not really seeing very much of my shirt at the moment, but I would tape it, let's see, no you can't see it at all, can you? Ah! Tape it onto my shirt so that I could wear it literally throughout the con. So that on my chest I had this mini billboard showing my association to this book uh, to everyone who looked at me or talked with me or saw me on a panel. Now mind you, this may sound like a minor thing, and I'm sure it, it, uh, technically it was. It's not really that I was under the impression that I would get a book sale for every person that saw me wearing this this bookmark. It was more that um, in marketing and in promotion, one of the goals is familiarity. That is making people familiar with this uh, thing that you're hoping they'll you know engage in. They'll they'll buy. Um, and so this massively caused people who saw me, and typically I would go to cons that had about a thousand people at them, roughly, um, to become uh, very strongly impressed, or not at a subconscious level, I suppose, but not, uh, anyway, they would be very much, it would be impressed upon them that I was associated with this book. Now, once again, this is the first uh, book cover for this book, it came out in 2004. Since then, I have redesigned the book cover, uh, I think about five years ago, and then uh, again, about, uh, I think it was last winter, um, a friend of mine designed a new book cover for it that I, that I really like. It's very nice. Um, the, but those, that's only one thing you can do with, uh, uh, with uh, bookmarks. Um, because they are so cheap, I paid less than five cents a piece for these, um, and I think I ordered, uh, I forget if it was the 2,000 or 5,000 uh, when, I, when I printed my book the first time. But they can be, of course, given away free. Um, 
to, uh, to people who are interested. If somebody buys your book, you can put a bookmark in it, or a couple of them. I would usually put two in, um, which they can then use to hold their place in other books. Um, you can, uh, if, you, if you have bookstores in your town, you can go into there, in there and ask, can I put up, uh, can I give you some bookmarks that you can give away free? And very often they would say, yeah, sure. They were all for it. They would set them on the counter. If you had a container to, to, to display them in, they would use that. Otherwise, they would just set them on the counter in a little stack. You can leave 10 or 20 or 30. Um, and they would leave them there. They wouldn't sell them. But, uh, and they wouldn't really promote them. But if somebody saw them, they would say, hey, can I have a bookmark? And they would say, sure, help yourself. And so they would be given away over time. Nowadays, because most book sales, the overwhelming majority of book sales nowadays are electronic, people have forgotten about the, the power of bookmarks, which of course means that there's less competition for yours. <laughs> Before I made this video, I went online to verify that there were still companies that made bookmarks. These were made with offset lithography because of the time period. Um, again, 2004. Now, uh, nowadays, I imagine they're probably made by um, uh, print-on-demand, that is, uh, uh, digital printing, uh, high-speed digital printing. The, um, I saw, uh, I, I don't remember their names. You can easily find them with a Google search for bookmark um, or bookmark, bookmark printing. Um, and I saw two companies. One had, for $27, they would do 1,000 of them, and another was, uh, it was a little bit more, and they would do 500. Um, they may have slightly different uh, sizes and color requirements and stuff, but again, they're highly customizable. Now, if you are independently print, uh, published, uh, then you have control over your designs, and unless you, you know, contracted out uh, an artist to uh, create your book cover for you, in which case you may have to talk to them about um, uh, permission to have uh, bookmarks made. Now, I should point out that if you compare the bookmark to my book cover, that they are not identical. The uh, bookmark, uh, I designed my cover, this cover, the bookmark uh, mimics the design but does not um, exactly copy it. Uh, because of the, the narrowness of a bookmark, it was important that, um, uh, that I incorporated the motif and the style, uh, but it, it would have overflowed very much the, if I had actually tried to transpose it, or it would have made the, the skull much smaller, which of course the skull is almost identically the same size. These are the only bookmarks I have ever made, even though I have, uh, I have um, three novels in print. Uh, my first novel that I wrote uh, has never been, never been published. Uh, and I don't know that it will be ever. Uh, it might be. I don't know. I was punching it up uh, about a year ago, and it's getting pretty nice. It's, uh, I've smoothed out a lot of the rough edges. Anytime you write your first novel, it's going to have more rough spots than, than later works. Um, anyway, the, uh, the point of this is that uh, bookmarks are very valuable as a promotional tool. You can give them to fans. You can offer them as prizes uh, from your website, or if, uh, if you get to, if you get to be interviewed on a podcast, you can um, offer them uh, to anybody who writes in or that you know uh, sends you an email if they send you your snail mail address. Um, the uh, the the power is both diminished now because of electronic pro uh, publishing, but also uh, increased now because they have become more rare. Um, they're more, a little bit more treasured, really. Um, independent publishers, that is, indie publishers, ha now seem to ignore them completely. Um, the, uh, I mean, you can send them if you're, I mean, I have sent them literally, it sounds comical, but I have actually sent a few um, over, you know, not, a, not a, a, over a period of time, but uh, just out of the blue, just out of the, on a whim, really, I sent them in with my bills. <laughs> so that I was paying the electric bill. I stuck a bookmark in there. Um, they have that kind of flexibility. Um, I should mention that there is a, a freebie table at virtually every con that I've ever been to, and I've been to quite a few. Um, the freebie table is um, generally located in the lobby, but not always, of the hotel. 
um, and you are allowed to put anything on there that you're willing to give away for free. And I generally put bookmarks on that table. Um, also on the table, you'll see uh, some people have will put books. You know, their their whole a whole copy of their book. Sometimes three or four. Uh, especially uh, publisher publishing houses will do this um, as a way to drive you know uh, interest in that in the, in that author the other books by that author and to uh, pr for promotional purposes. Um, I have not put books out very much because uh, I don't have the deep pockets. P uh, publishing houses have an advantage over in that regard in that they, if they do a print run and some of them are returned, well then they just sit in the warehouse or they have to be de destroyed. And so they can give them away free as long as they don't give away too many, I guess, in their opinion, uh, in which case they would, you know, flood the market. And if, in case you're curious, I will also mention that uh, my first novel, this is my first novel in its original first edition cover. Uh, it was published in 1999 as opposed to 2004. Um, of course, the cover's been redesigned a number of times since then. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? Oh, I'd like to tell you how I got the idea, and this is kind of another promotional possibility that you can indulge in, I suppose. Um, Years ago, in fact, it might have been only a couple years after I started going to, uh, to science fiction conventions, which was 2003, um, my sister was doing a coupon club thing, uh, meeting at the library, and the, uh, the local newspaper came out and did a story about her, and I was there helping, helping her, you know, with stuff, because it was her first meeting for this coupon club. And the reporter was wearing a badge, and to identify that she was actually from the the spa the, the the local paper, the uh, and I was fascinated by her badge, not um, because I had been writing magazine articles with no badge myself, and so I decided that um, that I would take a photo of her in order to get a picture of her badge and mimic it in some way, not exactly mimic it, not trying to make, you know, a, a copy of it so that I can pretend I'm from her paper, but that I could pretend, not pretend, but I could signify that I was actually from uh, some publication that I was associated with. At the time, I was only associated with one, and it was a very loose association. It was Nth Degree Magazine run by uh, Mike Pedersen, and so, um, uh, and so it occurred to me that I would, and so I went home and I made up a badge. Um, you can buy uh, laminating, laminating kits that if you print something up in color, which I printed up at a local um, digital printing facility, a, a, a storefront, uh, and put it between here, you take this piece of paper out, and then you close this down and it's self-sticking, and then you can put a, uh, one of these on it, and you have a, a very authentic looking badge. This one um, I made uh, a number of years later when I was working for Jim Bain's Universe Magazine as a columnist and contributing editor. Um, this is not official to them. It's one I made to show that I was associated with them. The, uh, that first one, if I had asked him by email, if I could uh, tell people that I'm with his magazine, and then if I get some good, uh, good interviews, that I that he can, um, I can write about him. He can put them in his magazine. Mind you, his magazine was not a major national magazine. It was basically what they call a, a, a zine back then. Um, it was a, a physical magazine printed up in physical form, maybe 500 issues or copies of each issue. Um, but, uh, you know, it was pretty cool. And I was going to Dragon Con, and I wanted to get interviews with uh, some of the stars for his, for, you know, partly for, mostly for his magazine. But uh, although it was the back of my mind, I was thinking maybe I can get some for, you know, my podcast, which I had, uh, I think I had gotten it going then, I believe. I think it was probably around 2006, maybe 2007, probably six. Anyway, um, and he said, yeah, sure, go for it. Uh, just meaning, tell them tell whoever I'm thinking of interviewing that I'm with his magazine. And I did not tell him I was going to experiment with the idea of making printing up these badges. And so I made one for myself, and I thought it was pretty cool looking. 
and uh, it said press in big letters on it and the name of his magazine and it said that I was a, a I think a correspondent or something like that um, and so I made one also for my peg and my sister peg she's my photographer uh, goes to the cons with me if you see a photo of me at a con it's almost invariably Peggy uh, has taken that picture because she attended uh, almost every con I've been to almost um, and uh, she she does a very good job of taking photographs for me anyway um, so I showed up at Dragon Con and I, ha I was wearing a badge that had his magazine's name on it and he laughed and I reached over and handed him, and here's yours. <laughs> I pulled a photo of him off of uh, his magazine or something and stuck it on a badge like mine. And his, his said, you know, Mike Pedersen, <laughs> yeah, editor-in-chief of Nth Degree Magazine. Uh, and he laughed. He thought it was pretty cool, cool. I don't know if he actually wore it, but uh, so I gave him a badge. So his, his magazine had an official badge at that point. Uh, anyway, um, but... You could make a badge that, uh, this one says Jim Baines Universe Magazine, where I was contributing editor and, uh, uh, and a columnist um, for a time, for about three years. Uh, but you could make a badge that has your book cover in it. Or it could have um, not necessarily your entire book cover, which might be kind of busy and very small writing. But it could have, like the, uh, like the um, uh, bookmark, it could have a, a portion of the style, for example, the, the, the glowing red skull uh, could be the size of my face on this badge. Um, uh, anyway, the, the idea is that because you're wearing this all the time and everybody at the con sees you wearing this, it would be associated with you. And this association, because human beings are, they remember things associatively, that is to say, if they recall you, they would think of the badge. And if they recall the badge, they'll think of you. And so this can have a, uh, a strong, a very powerful effect um, on those who see you. Um, I, I know I talk about going to cons a lot, but um, I, it's something I generally go to, go to two or three, sometimes four, but generally about two or three cons per year. And I've been doing it since 2003. This is the first year I've not gone to a con um, because of course the coronavirus and so I've gone I've gone to dozens maybe 25 I don't know maybe 30 cons um, over the years um, and it has uh, it has helped my my career a good bit um, sold a lot of books because of it oh and here's a badge I made for uh, my podcast <laughs> it's a very early picture of me with very dark hair uh, but uh, but I thought it was pretty cool. I wore it for, you know, a number of times. You'll, you'll notice it in uh, a number of pictures of me. Anyway, that's just some of the ways you can use uh, Bookmark as a promotional tool uh, for your book. Uh, I'm sure I have not covered all of the possibilities. It's just some of the possibilities that I have experimented with myself. You guys have a wonderful evening, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.